you for joining us for live paranormal radio. From the paranormal to the unexplained, it all happens here. It all happens here. Looking to enhance your radio experience? Participate in our live video chat 24-7 with our live paranormal radio show hosts and other like-minded people. Live. Paranormal.com, the only interactive social chat room supported by Full Interaction Media. Stop by now and join the fun. Stop by now and join the fun. Well, I guess they're not going to play the Channeling Eric intro. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they put it in afterwards. But it doesn't make any difference because guess what? I'm so glad you guys are on our show. And Eric Medhus, my 21-year-old, my 20-year-old son who died a few years ago, is also glad you're here. And he's uh, so eager to help you guys deal with life, death, and everything in between. So first, I want to uh, talk to, to uh, introduce Kim Babcock, a spirit translator. Kim, you want to share your site and how people can book readings and any other information you want to share? Hello, sure. Guys, you can connect with me. Um, I work as a medium, primarily, connecting you to loved ones on the other side. Um, I also help connect you to Eric and um, help you identify how you're connecting with Eric. And then also I provide just regular old psychic readings, just boring old psychic readings. If you're looking for higher guidance and advice, I just tap into my guides, um, Eric being one of them most of the time, and bring forth information to you that helps Um, kind of shift your perspective to help you see a new way of approaching things and also um, a new way to navigate life. So one way or another, I promise these sessions will help and um, propel you into a better version of yourself. That's what I always say is I do this to help bring you to a better version of yourself. So a lot of times that is with Eric's help. And if you're interested in booking a session with myself and Eric, you can find us on um, my website at kimbabcock.net. Also, the Channeling Eric blog. You can find some information there, too. Um, channelingeric.com. And then there's all kinds of videos, you guys, on YouTube that will also help you and shift your perspective, maybe make living life a little bit easier. So check out Channeling Eric on YouTube as well. But I'm so happy you guys are here. We have a show kind of geared up for you. Eric's ready. This show is sort of in response to the Denver event that we just had over the weekend, the first of the tour. Um, A lot of people had asked many questions about how to talk to Eric, when to, and he kind of wants to clear some things up and help you guys understand how to communicate with him, when to communicate with him, and so on, and answer your questions about that. So, guys, I hope you're ready. I know Eric is here. He's ready. He says, what's up, Hi, Eric. I love you, baby. He says, I love you more. (laughs) I don't think that's possible. He says, ah, and he's tapping on his heart. He says, Mom, he says, there's so many people that they get confused. And he says, a lot of times they're afraid. He says, they get confused on how to talk to me. And he says, these are some of the things that I want, I want to break down for you guys to help you understand how to talk to me, how to recognize when you're talking to me. <laughs> He's kind of laughing when he <laughs> says that. Um, and how to um, let go of some of your fears of when you talk to me. And then he's like bouncing his eyebrows. <laughs> he says, that's that creepy word, expectations. He says, so first of all, how to. And he's going, how to, how to, how to. (laughs) So he's talking really fast. It's kind of like he's writing it over and over on a chalkboard. Like, you know how when you get in trouble and you have to, like, back in the old days, you go up and you have to write something over and over. I will not, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) That's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So he says, how to. Okay, first of all, people, he says, this isn't going to be one thing across the board on how to talk to Eric Medhus. Instead... He says, revert it, flip it around and listen to you. When you think about me and talk to me, he's busting up laughing, by the way. (laughs) He says, (laughs) what resonates the most when you think about me? Is it compassion? Is it inspiration, motivation? 
think about what resonates with between you and me first and then use that vibrational frequency he says as your platform to talk to me it's kind of like building a room for yourself he says and then you go inside that room and you know that I'll always be there he says so he says I don't want you to he says a lot of you approach me in fear though it's like ooh, I don't know if I should ask Eric or I think I might be asking too much of Eric but I'm just going to ask him anyway if he can help me through this process. He says, friends, people, <laughs> he says, I'm here to tell you. He says, you can never ask too much of me. And if I think you're being needy or developing an unhealthy attachment, he says, trust me, I'll let you learn on your own. <laughs> so you can ask me all you want for help and guidance every minute of every waking hour. But I know what's best for you. I know when I can come in and help and give you guidance. Because I have that sight, he says, remember I am of higher intelligence over here. I have the, the knowing, perhaps, or the perspective that you may not see. So don't, he says, don't approach with hesitation. And don't, <laughs> it's like he has his hands up. Like if you were to say, hands up, you know, don't shoot. He says, don't approach me in fear. He says, release that fear and and know that I'll let you learn however I see that's going to benefit you the most. If that's from me, if that's guidance from me, I'll help. I'll be there. You can count on it, he says. And if you ask me the very next moment to help you with something and I know that you're not supposed to um, experience that guidance from me, but you're supposed to experience it authentically, by yourself, he says, I'll still stand by and watch, and I'll be there, but sometimes I can't intervene. I cannot interact. And he's pointing up, so that's uh, symbolically how he references God. I know what you're supposed to experience and how. He says, so I want you guys to think about that, and I want you to remember, however you connect to me, um, <laughs> He's laughing. He says, some of you flirt with me all the time, believe it or not. Oh, he yeah, says, I can name a couple of people, but I, but I will not. Yeah. I got, you got a lot of crushes on you, Eric. That's so true. And he says, some of you see me as your own son. Some of you see me as your brother. Um, and so that's how I want you to approach me. I want you to think about that bond and what resonates with you first because that's going to be a much more natural experience than anything else. He said, if I were to tell you one way to say, okay, it goes like this, A, B, C, and F, <laughs> A, B, C, and fucking D. <laughs> oh, says, God. There we go. Uh, if you think it's going to be, yeah, he says, if you think it's going to be one way all across the board, then you don't know me well enough. <laughs> He says, um, so listen to you first. How do you connect with me? Um, and then he randomly just said off the side, he said, listen to my mom too. <laughs> He's oh, like, I don't have don't. anything intelligent to say. <laughs> He's being so goofy. <laughs> he says, don't not listen to her. And then he's like showing like um, like getting a ruler slammed on the back of his hand. <laughs> Just uh -oh. symbolically, though, not literally. He's just like, um, just behave. <laughs> he says, you people <laughs> behave. He's just being a goofball. But he's encouraging you guys to to don't think that there is a right way or a wrong way to talk to me. Whatever is the way that feels best for you, that's the way I want you to talk to me. Because if you force it to be in a different way or something that works for somebody else, it's not going to work for you, he says. And remember, oh, okay, so there's something else, too. He wants to talk about abandonment and neglect. So just uh, a side note here, quick. Um, but anyway, he says, to, to finish that thought, remember you cannot ask too much of me. Um, I will help you see your attachments and where you probably should look at yourself and depend more on yourself than on me. He says, but I'll never, I'll never leave you hanging high and dry either. Mm. He says, Mom, there's a lot of people, too, that have 
this fear, he said, it's fucking eating them up that they think, oh, well, now that I know Eric, I ask Eric all the time instead of my personal guides or Mm. whoever they used to call on before they knew me. He says, people carry that guilt. They think, well, yikes, I used to talk to my guide all the time, and now that I know Eric, I ask Eric all the time. And now they feel, they carry that guilt that they've abandoned their own personal team. Yeah, those guys are going to get jealous. (laughs) He says, um, he says, trust me, When I tell you, he says, you asking me is is no different than you asking them. And then he's like, he's giving like squinting one eye and then the other eye is wide open. And he says, remember, we're all connected among the common thread. So to us, it doesn't matter how the guidance gets to you as long as the guidance gets to you. So well, it's not sense. like we're over. He says it's not like we're over here um, placing bets and saying, "Oh, I bet he's going to ask you." I tr- I bet he trusts you more. He says it's not like that over here. All that we care about is that the guidance gets to you, and where you feel safe in placing your trust is going to be most effective in your reception, in your ability to receive the guidance. So, if you feel comfortable working with me for a while. He says, um, <laughs> he's so cute. Uh-oh. He, he's, like, bouncing his shoulders, and he goes, it's all good. I don't hate. He's, like, dusting his shoulders off. He's like, it's all good. I don't hate, so I'll help anyone. Like, he has no prejudice against, you know, helping anybody. So he's just been really sweet. But Aww. he says, um, it's about you. It's about your comfort, and it's about your level of feeling safe. Um, and being able to be vulnerable and opening up. So, and then he says, too, and he gets like a real deep tone, and he puts his chin down a little bit. He says, trust that, he says, trust that there is a reason why I'm working with you right now anyway, and why you have awareness to me and my teachings anyway. So the fact that he's coming in as a guide in your life Um, Whether it's temporary or permanent, trust that you are sort of shifted to that awareness to me anyways. He says, there's a rhyme and there's a reason, I promise. (laughs) How many people do you guide at any one given time? He says, Mom, right now, at any one given time, he says, um, thousands. But collectively... He says right now he's working with over hundreds of thousands. Oh, my God. I mean, seriously? Really? Look, you're that busy, and I had to sweat bullets to try to get you to clean up your room? What is up with that? He says, I know, I know, Mom. He goes, cut me a break. It's the density of being there. Uh, (laughs) He says, it's really hard to clean my room. (laughs) Oh, God, yeah. I was like, you take one look at it and say, ugh, why bother? It looks like a, this would be a perfect setting for the documentary of a uh, F4 tornado, pretty much. <laughs> he says, he says, if you want to look at it that way, though, too, I kind of see um, my job. He says it doesn't feel the same, but it looks the same in that it's it's constantly like helping you clean your. <laughs> he says, clean yourself, <laughs> and he literally shows like a cat licking itself. <laughs> oh way. boy. He says, like, with with me asking me for guidance, he says, what I do is I help you shed the fear, the negativity. So I'm helping you clean yourself and rid of what doesn't serve you. And he says, yeah, like a cat licking itself. That's about the best image you got. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. Uh-oh, oh. must have been a, a certain part that he was licking. Otherwise, you would not <laughs> say, oh, my goodness. Okay. I know. That that image is going to carry on for the rest of the night for me. Yep, I hope you guys all enjoy that visual as well. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. All right, well, anything else you want to say before we start taking callers? He just says, Mom, thank you. He has his hands out, like, um, uh, like giving gratitude to you. He just says, thank you. Oh, I'm so grateful for you too, baby. He's like whispering. He says, I love you. I love you too. I don't know why he whispers. 
Yeah, Kaylee now starts everybody knows. Like, why are you whispering? <laughs> the cat is out of the bag. All right, well, let's go ahead and take callers then. Thank you so much for that, Eric. First, I want to say that I'm really grateful, speaking of gratitude, for LiveParanormal.com for giving me this venue to spread a little Eric love all over the world. And let's go ahead and take a caller from the 501 area code. I recognize that as being Arkansas. Hey there, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Hey. What is your name? Um, I can you hear it. Uh, yes, My name is Deanna. Hi, Deanna. Hello, how what are you? you? I'm doing great. Actually, Deanna is one of the one one of the people that tries to make me beautiful. She puts <laughs> uh, lash extensions on me, despite the fact that I don't have that many lashes to put extensions on. But I'm grateful to her. So, Dee, cool. what would you like to ask Eric? Um, I've been having some trouble sleeping, and um, I really don't know if it is something internal, like um, something like in my body, or if it's um, something that I'm thinking about, or am I like troubled? I, I'm not understanding it. Like I stay up till maybe three in the morning every day. And uh, I really would like to know what it is so I can try to fix it <laughs> and go to sleep. What do you got for Eric? <laughs> He's like flexing his muscles. He says, well, I am Mr. Fix-It. So <laughs> he has on a white T-shirt that says Mr. Fix-It in black letters. <laughs> so he says, um, first, he says, I want you to rest your mind um, in thinking that it has something to do with your health because it, it's not anything to do with your health. He's like, physically, you're fine. It's not related to, you know, anything going on with the body. He says, but what it is related to, and a lot of people are experiencing this right now, he says, is um, a vibrational shift through, he says, through your consciousness. And he goes, what do I mean? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> he <laughs> says, um, when, he says, um, all of us are empaths, believe it or not. And he says, I know some people you would disagree that they have no feelings at all. Um, he is quite the card tonight. <laughs> I tell but you, it seems like it. He is. He's really chatty. But he says, um, we all feel to different degrees, well, he says, not degrees, different frequencies, um, different wavelengths, different vibrations. And when it is heightened or think about it as like your, um, he says, spiritually, you're a car in a workshop and the angels and guides are fine-tuning you right now. And mm. so you're a little more perceptive. You're working a little bit better. All of, um, he says, your transmission is working well. All of the points of connectivity are flowing well. So um, he says, he's showing me an image, Elisa, and I, can't, I cannot think of the name of this. Oh, my God, this takes me back to my anatomy days. Um, it's the neurotransmitters. What are they called? Oh, gosh. Like serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine. There's something that starts with an S, S Y N. Synapses? Yes. I don't know what that means, but he's like showing it's me the, the image of it. It's the little connection. It's the little connection between neurons. It's the little oh, okay. space that the neurotransmitter jumps across to get to the other neuron. Thank you, Dr. Methus. <laughs> so he's showing uh, me this image, and he says that. Um, the guides, your guides, are working on basically fine-tuning you. All of these um, connection points, he says, are working at their highest, at um, better than they were. So how does that translate into what you're experiencing? It, for a while, temporarily, he says, it's um, experienced as heightened awareness, a lot of mind chatter, and inability to rest or calm or quiet the mind, but that's not always a bad thing, he says. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just the energy is up. 
he says, but a lot of people are experiencing this right now. And tips on how to sleep better because he says you are in a group of many that are going through this, like kind of, again, showing me like an automobile in a workshop. He says things that you can do is really what is going to help the body calm down and quiet down so that you can rest is routine. He says it's basic, it's simple, but it's true and it helps. When your body, when your physical body gets into a routine, it can vibrationally recognize that routine. Um, So he says to give yourself about a week to create a new routine and then adjust to it. Um, Mm -hmm. So if it's a certain time, he says break it down at least by the half hour. Um, At this half hour, Mm -hmm. you're going to watch a little bit of TV. And then at this next half hour, no TV just rest and quietness, and then the next half hour, go to bed. Whatever you need to do, he says. But routine is going to help your body shut down and quiet down so that you can get restful sleep and still, he says, still be worked on. Um, So I hope that this helps. Well, why is she being worked on? Something special about Dee? (laughs) He shakes his hips and he says well there's something special about all of us but he says he says mom there's a large group of people right now that their consciousness is being shifted it's it's guides working on them their personal guides to shift their awareness higher their vibration gets higher and in turn most of these people are seeing an in, either an inability to achieve restful sleep or a quiet mind, he says. Mm-hmm. He says, okay, why you know, her? Like, I mean, why? What's the purpose of of, of all this? That was going to be my question. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to ask that if my if my guides have something to tell me. Um, I'm kind of a person who I believe I have a a heightened sense of things like that, and I've really felt that. I do think that there's going to be a very large shift in my life soon, Um, but I would like to know if there's, like, certain things that I need to be, like, aware of or or doing. That makes me feel a lot better. Thank you, Eric, for that, too, because I know I'm not crazy. (laughs) He says, of course, and he says, no, you're not crazy, and he's like, he goes, hell, if you're crazy, then I'd I hate to know what you'd call me, but he says, um, he says, so why you? Well, it's it's the recognition on our side. He says, think of it like this. When you vibrationally move into a certain frequency that says to us that you're ready, you, it's kind of like putting on the green light. The green light attracts um, certain energies to work with you, to bring you to more of a spiritually minded standpoint um so okay so for example let's say you're contemplating a career shift um one being very spiritual the other not that to them sets off a signal showing that you're ready and then that's when they come in and start to intervene and work on your transmission he says but Mm -hmm. he does make me feel also though that you will be making a transition to spiritually driven um, spiritually driven services offering um, there's something going on with your hands so there's uh, when he shows me that there's a healing touch um, um, energy healing vibration healing he says but then also coaching there's verbal energy too so <laughs> he said couple these and what do you get so it's like what it looks like is energy healing and then coaching after the session, uh, sharing with your client and coaching them how to raise their own awareness. Um, but he says to take it all the way back to the beginning, the reason why you're experiencing this and feeling this is because you are a very strong empath and you can use that in a positive way to affect what's going on around you and to understand what's going on around you. So, again, when you're in this vulnerable place, that puts off a signal to us to say, hey, I'm ready. 
So that's why you and so many others that are experiencing this right now, too. Thank you very much. That sounds great. I hope that helped you, Deanna. Yes, ma'am, it did. Thank you very much. Good. You're welcome. See you in a few weeks. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Bye. Bye. She's really sweet, but she, you know, yeah, she... She feels a lot. She feels people's energy a whole bunch, so that's kind of cool. All right, let's take another uh-huh. caller. How how about, uh, let's see, how about the uh, 757 area code? Hi there. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Me? Yes, you. Oh, my goodness, I got through. Hi. <laughs> oh okay, so I've been Hi. listening to you for forever. Hi, both of you. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Um, don't get mad at this kind of religious question, but um, you know what in the Bible it says. Wait, what, 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 what's your name? Oh, I'm sorry, Sheila. Hi, and, um, Sheila. I'm in, I'm in Virginia Beach, where the Edgar Casey Foundation okay. is, and a lot of, oh. a lot of mediums here. Um, mm. But I have to, I've been dying to ask this. Like, so the Bible says it doesn't say that you can talk to dead people. It says you, it's possible, but that you shouldn't. So I'm having such a hard time justifying how I feel about you guys as much as I love you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's, a, that's um, a really good question because I want a lot of people to understand it. Perfect. It is a really good question. And Eric says, Kim? It's all yours. So (laughs) I'm going to do a little bit of explaining just on what I went through, um, and then I'll see if Eric has anything on top of that that he'd like to add. Um, For me, excuse me, when I first started doing this work, I was coming from a background of a really strong Catholic, and that was really hard because uh, the Bible was telling me not to do what I was doing, and the church was too, (laughs) but my heart... And my connection with God was telling me to keep doing what I was doing. So I literally, Sheila, had a complete breakdown after probably a year of doing readings and trying to figure out where this information was coming from, how, why, you know, if I was being deceived, so many people try to convince me that I'm evil. And I finally just kind of broke down, literally fell to my knees and asked God you know, outside of the Bible, I'm not even talking about t- connecting to the Bible anymore, but asking God in my heart, if this is coming from you, you know, I will continue to do it. If it is not coming from you, make it stop. And I guess my faith in that connection is just, um, I don't question it. I, I truly believe that if you ask something and you believe you'll receive it why not so to me i asked um if this isn't coming from you make it stop and it increased tenfold so i knew wow and i understood that okay this is coming from god and then i i just kind of heard from my guides if it is meant to help how can it be wrong if it is coming Mm. from a positive place How can that be wrong? So even though the Bible may go through different translations, different people, um, different perspectives, um, I kind of rose above that and just asked God through my heart and my own personal connection, and I was encouraged to continue doing it, and primarily because I have seen so much healing come from it, and that's where I know God is directly um, associated with what I do. So... So okay. Why is it written in the Why is that written in the Bible that it's, that we shouldn't be doing this? Is that man, a man's interpretation? Is it, there a reason for it? Is it is, you know, Ask Eric. Yeah, this is trying why Eric to, is... to oppress oppress the masses and control them. And what what's it all about? This is where Eric comes in and he says, "Mom, he says that is that is um, interpreted from a fear based perspective." Um. And he's going to get real deep here. He says, um, <laughs> he says the incarnation of Jesus was to teach us, you know, Jesus showed mindfulness 
of where he came from, knowing that he came from a higher source, and he continued that connection. He talked to God. And he even, at the time of his crucifixion, asked for forgiveness of the people because they didn't even know what they were doing. They didn't even know what they were ignorant of, he says. So he says, let the life of Jesus be a representation of, and then he, he cut himself off. He says, I want you to think about this. We start as spirit. That's the essence of who we are. And then we incarnate into a human body, a human shell. He says, um, so you can't abandon the essence of who you are and what you are. And you can't abandon your home, your home being the spiritual world, Eric says. So if you have friends here, if you have family here, he says, in essence, that is also a part of you because we all are a part of one, he says. So I want you to think about it that way, he says, that you can't and you're not supposed to abandon that part of you. He says that part of you is God. God is is life force that is in everything and everyone. Therefore, truly, he says, God can't abandon you and you can't abandon God. You can turn away from, but you can never separate yourself from. He says that is the life, that is the force that gives life to anything and everything. So going back to your question, though, he says what you see or what you have read in the Bible in regards to don't talk to those in the afterlife, he says that is a man-made idea or thought that um, has transpired from fear. Um, and it's, it's literally, he says, fear of thinking, we're disrupting rest. He says, but I tell you, if communicating with us, oh, man, this is, this is powerful stuff. He's equating communicating with any of your loved ones just the same as communicating with God. Because, again, we all exist among that common thread, which is God. <laughs> So um, just as you talk to God, talk to your loved ones, because God upholds their life and yours too. You are connected first, and that connection is eternal and immortal, he says. So just because you have a human body doesn't mean you should abandon that side of you. All right, so that mankind... Mankind was afraid to disturb the spirits from their rest? He says, yes, Mom, that was the thinking. Yeah, you know, when Eric died and, you know, I kept communicating with him, people would fuss at me and say, come on, you know, let him rest in peace. It's like, freaking no. Man, I want to continue to have a relationship with my son. He says... But if we're, um, if we're busy talking to them, then then how are we not accomplishing what we're supposed to here? I think it's all balanced. You know, you, you, you can have a, yeah, you can have a relationship with your loved one, but still carry on your human experience. But go ahead, Eric, your two cents. He says, um, he says, well, it's, you're right, Mom. He says, um, as long, he says, you can communicate with spirit and the afterlife. But where we draw the line, and even God, he says, is if you become too attached to where you don't understand the value of your own incarnation and the physical life that you're living, and you can't depend on yourself, and you're more, he says, your headspace is more in the afterlife than the physical, that's when, he says, it gets a little iffy. (laughs) So just like you said, Mom, find balance. Um... But he's kind of just going back to repeating the same phrase. You can't abandon the essence of what you are, and the essence of what you are is spirit. And in that, we're all connected among that common thread. So um, he just keeps saying that that is translated from fear. That comes from fear. Um, So do you think that helps? I hope it helps you. 
Yes, thank you so much, and thanks. I, I can't listen to you enough, and thank you, Eric, and thanks, and I'm going to hang up now because I'm nervous. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, no, you're okay. Thank you so much for calling, sweetie. Bye. You know, that was a very, very important thing for a lot of people to hear because I do get all these comments, oh, you're talking to the devil and things like that. So good, good. Me too. Good on Sheila that's out there. Yeah. All right, let's talk to somebody on the 801 area code. Hello. How are you doing, and who are who am I talking with? Hello. Um, Hi. My name is Noelle. Hi, Hi Noelle. Noelle. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was just wondering if I could ask Eric to um, kind of connect with my higher self and um, give me a message that's relevant right now. Eric says, um, this is interesting. He says, Noel, do you see colors? He, it's yes. Super- <laughs> okay, because he, he was starting to approach it as a rhetorical question, and he just keeps repeating it. Do you see colors? Do you see colors? Um, this is very interesting, but he's very playful and very interactive with this message. He says, I want you, this is coming from your higher self, but translated by Eric. He says, I want you to focus on the meaning of colors. Um, First and foremost, just what they mean to you in the way they feel to you. But then he says, um, like the vibrational makeup of colors, because you're getting a lot of information clairvoyantly, um, through colors. So, and then he said the word auras. Um, I can't see those. He's um he's got my third eye really buzzing, but so he what he's doing is just kind of he's stimulating um my third eye to talk about what is opening up in you. And mm-hmm. when he's referencing using colors, He's showing auras, like you're going to begin to understand auras and Mm -hmm. see them. But he also says, this is kind of cool to point out, I guess. Um, I guess I've never really talked about it, but for me, if I really focus, I can see an aura. But most of the time, because my clear audience is so, um, so, I guess, worked on, I hear the color. I know that sounds really weird but I hear the color rather than see the color. So I might... Well, that's, that's synesthesia, where you, where you, like, smell colors or or, or taste um, different sights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Um, Elisa, you'll have to text me that word because I've never heard that before. But I have it's done that too where I walk yeah. into a room and I'm like, oh, it feels red in here. What's that all about? Mm-hmm. So um, he says that you're going to be perceiving colors uh, very similarly. Um and just to look into the meaning of them because you're going to learn a lot about the world around you. And then you're also going to learn how to, he says, remotely use the colors to heal, which is wow. really interesting. So um, <laughs> he keeps saying, write this down, write this down. But um, focus on colors and their meanings. Listen to what they feel like. Um he said, hear how they feel. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that means, but hear how they feel, hear them, and see them. Um, so from your higher self, Eric takes a bow, and he says, I hope this information helps and gives you an area to focus on. And then he's tapping on the third eye. He goes, right here, Mama. <laughs> he says, uh, work on opening the third eye. Does he want me to do I mean, I'm for doing that, but does it, where, where does that how do I translate that into something? Says, you mean, Does that make he, sense? He says, do you mean how do you use that in your life? Yeah. He says, um, just real matter of fact, he says healing. Um, so, again, you're going to start doing, like, remote healings. Um, later, I feel like it may develop into one-on-one in-person sessions. He says, but you're going to be more comfortable doing it remotely first, like with your friends, say, um, hey, I'm going to send you some energy. You tell me how you pick up on it or what it feels like. Or even ask them. He says, 
what color do you think I was sending you? He says, and then he said, too, just as a side thing, he's like shrugging his right shoulder up. He goes, if you want, try painting, too, because that's really going to <laughs> amplify um, the way you understand colors. So it might sound a little bit weird, but if you're like sitting down and you're like, I'm just going to paint blue, as you're just painting because of what you feel, you're going to start to really understand the vibration of blue because you're tuned into it and you're painting it. You're, does that make Ooh. sense? Like you're putting it on a canvas based on the mm-hmm. vibration you feel. Yeah, I've had I've had um, um, inner callings, I guess, to paint for about a year now, and I've um, not really done anything with it. So it it's it makes true. sense. Um, I am hugely attracted to color. I, it's just, I, I don't even know how to explain it, really. Um, he says, well, color holds a lot of information, and when you're really stimulated based on something's color, let that information speak to you. And then he's tapping on his watch. When he's talking about painting, he's tapping on his watch like, any day now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, get on it, girl. Get on it, girl. Well, wow, that was really fascinating. I hope that helps you. Yeah, just um, if he, you know, has any more information to share, I'm I'm open to him giving it to me at any point. He says, um, he says, listen to your heart and watch your third eye. Um, he says that he'll play with you. He'll give you color. He says, I'll, I'll interact with you, I'll play with Aww. you, I'll give you color. And Aww, he's like, okay. he looks like a magician. Like all of a sudden this ball of light comes from his hands that's red and then blue. So um, he says that he'll help guide your thoughts too, just to understand the vibration of the color. Awesome. So, so you okay. have a new playmate there. <laughs> that's cool. Well, I well, hope this information calling. helps you. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. He goes, okay. she was neat, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah, really, it just it aligned so much with how she had been feeling and her interest in colors. Oh, that was awesome. Let's yeah, talk to somebody cool. from the 360 area code, 360. Hi, Hello. who am I speaking with? Hi. Hi there. Hi, my name's Marlene. Marlene, that's a pretty name. Thank you. It's my combination of my calling? parents' names. Um, I'm in Northwest from? Washington State. Oh, okay. cool. Country. Yes, it is. So what have you got to ask Eric? Um, so I actually talk to Eric a lot, and my daughter and I get messages back from him on the board. Oh, um, my God, that's crazy because he's showing that right now. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. We We have a lot of fun. And um, I I appreciate his irreverence. <laughs> so, um, oh God! But, I'm sorry, it did not come from me. Okay, I promise. <laughs> oh, uh, don't apologize. That's that's actually what maybe I like. a little bit. Okay, maybe a little bit. The cat's out of the bag. Whatever. <laughs> more from his father than me, but we are all in cahoots. No, that's that's one of the things I love most about him. Um, and he's always right there. Um, and I talk to him a lot. But um, anyway, he knows that I've been struggling with my current career, <laughs> where that's been taking me. Um, and it's been really hard for me to kind of get some direction. So if he could contact my higher self or if he has some new information on direction or how to be more okay. <laughs> Yeah, he's at, there's actually a lot coming through. Um, so first, he he's saying that he has such a good connection with you because of, like, what we were talking about earlier. So um, going back to what he was saying to open the show, he was talking about um, what resonates with you most when you think about Eric or talk to him and letting your connection unfold in that space. He says, that's why you know me so well. That's why we can work together so well, because you sort of, like, let it happen naturally. Um, And what he's saying to you in regards to career 
He says, if your heart isn't in it and your mind isn't in it, it's time to make a change. He makes me feel, it's almost like you're begging inside, you're begging for a change. He's he's giving me these old emotions that I used to go through um, when I did physical therapy. Although I loved doing therapy um, with the geriatrics, that part was ful- fulfilling, but I, I knew that I wanted to do spiritual work, so I still felt like every day a little piece of me was just dying slowly, and I felt like my soul was just getting ate up in that nursing home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he's giving those emotions to describe what you're going through, kind of feeling like slowly you're shedding mm-hmm. away from your career right, path. Like giving and, myself up to make sure other people are okay. <laughs> yeah, like mm-hmm. slowly... Um, shedding yourself or sacrificing your heart and what you want to almost like, and don't take offense to this, but it's like to fulfill a spot or like to show Mm -hmm. up and go through the motions. He says, I'm here to tell you when you have the courage to make the change. He says, I'll help guide you through that change. So, um, because he says it's going to take a lot of courage, but you are going to step away from whatever you're doing currently. He says you're going to take a lot of time for, he calls it um, reintegration, like uh, reintegrating into yourself or with Mm -hmm. yourself, Mm -hmm. getting to know yourself again. He says, um, no offense. (laughs) Again, I don't know why he's whispering, but But he he says... (laughs) um, He says, no offense, but when's the last time you checked in with yourself and you you thought to yourself, oh, this really feels like me, and then you spent a lot of time there and dwelled there. He says, you don't give enough time to that. Mm. He says, it's almost like living two separate lives, like during the day I have to go be this person, but when I get out of work, I get to be me. Right. Well, and there's no regular schedule, so it kind of jumps around and... (laughs) <laughs> he's um, he's actually giving a thumbs up, first of all, in the way that you use the board. Um, he says when we he says anyway when we talk about using the board, people. Just a real quick side note: make sure the front or the top of the board is facing north. And he throws his hands up. He's like, "That's all I'm going to say." But anyway. Oh, oh my God! Okay. I didn't know that. Oh my gosh! Really? Okay. <laughs> he says. Um, it really helps us out over here. <laughs> He's like shouting. Um, okay. <laughs> he says, take the top of the board and make sure that is facing north and the bottom is facing south. Okay. And then it's going to be much easier to get clear messages. Um, huh, okay. But for you, he says, you're going to take time to slow down. You're going to take time to reintegrate to yourself. Um, he makes me feel like whatever you're doing now, you're going to continue, but it feels like you're going to just cut off a huge chunk of time. Like, I don't know if you're full-time, and maybe you go down to part-time, but he says you're not quite ready for a complete shift yet. You're just going to take a lot of time. Time is what is needed. Well, what, what did you right, do Right, and I feel, like, I feel like that's needed, but how do I afford to do that? <laughs> yeah. He says, um, you bring up a good point that a lot of people are going to benefit from hearing. Um. First of all, when you want to make a change, first he says align with the emotions of it being in existence. So if you're wanting to be cutting down your hours, um, align with how good that feels to have more free time for yourself. Well, and that's funny because the last few weeks I've only had one family I've been working with, and that's that's exactly what that feels like, and I've been trying to appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah. So as you do that, he says you'll help bring it into your reality. You'll help manifest it. But if okay, you approach that's good it and thinking, um, yeah, and kind of like how I was going through when I was um, a clinical coordinator doing PT, I was would always think, well, I don't have the money to just walk away from this job. I can never do that. So he says instead of of acknowledging the barriers, right. acknowledge the the positive aspects, the positive emotions aligned with it. And those answers will come along the way. He says, I can't answer that for you. He says, when, if you think money is a barrier, money will be a barrier. 
Mm-hmm. And he goes, I know, I know, I'm asking you a lot, but you have to sidestep that one and don't acknowledge that as a barrier. Um, acknowledge what you want and the, yeah, the comfortable scarcity lifestyle. Is a, yeah, scarcity is an illusion. I know it seems on a practical level that seems ludicrous, but so listen, uh, we're going to run into the other show that follows us, so we're probably going to have to close. Any last words you have for her, Eric? He says, I hope that as you do go through, he says, you're going to be going through a lot of changes in, in many ways, personal relationships um, and professional relationships too. He says, so I hope that as you go through these changes that you continue to trust the steps that you're taking because sometimes they're going to be unconscious or, yeah, he just repeats that, like uh, like unconscious. Um, so you, it's when it's those moments when you're going to be guided, and you look back and you're like, I don't know why I made that choice, but I'm glad I did. That's when your guides kind oh, of step so, through so and not, take the lead. So that makes me think like it's kind of automatic. Yeah, like, <laughs> Eric okay. goes. That's, he's like, that can be my new nickname. Um, <laughs> so um, he says I can be automatic, but <laughs> he says when you look back um, and you think, oh, I don't know why I made that choice, but I'm glad I did. That's when you're almost like in. Um, a channel phase where your guides are kind of taking the lead. Um, so just trust each step of the way because he says that you'll face that. You'll face those moments where you're like, ooh, I don't know why I feel tugged, to, you know, pulled to do this, but mm-hmm. I'm going to. And, okay. and then you yeah. kind of look That's back awesome. and you think, well, thank God I did. So okay. That's awesome. I'll look I hope for the tug. Okay. Thank you. I'll look Thanks for the tug. For and I apologize to the next um radio show if we've gone over, but oh, I really no, appreciate we're good. it. So thanks, we're everybody. Good. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> thanks. All okay. right, so, guys, thank you for being a part of our show. And uh, if you want to check out Kim's site, it's www.kimbabcock.net. Don't forget that. And check out our YouTube videos. Check out the blog, Chilling Eric with a K. Um and uh, check out the tour. You know, it's not too late to sign up for New York City and all sorts of other cool places. Chicago, we're going to Orlando, Sedona, and uh, it'll be fun. Life-changing events. So thank you, guys, and thank you, Kim, and I love you, Eric. That's right, guys. Thank you so much. Eric says, Mom, he takes a bow. He says, as always, thank you so much. He says, I love you more. <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. Go out and haunt some people. He's like, you got it. (laughs) Bye. Have a great night, everybody.